Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back again. I'm sure you enjoyed and I'm <laughs> sure you're still there. Probably had your coffee now already. Um, we were talking about good neighbors and it's a crucial thing to have your um, peaceful life and you feel good as well if you have a good neighbors. You know, you don't have to frighten at night, you know, in the middle of the night, what's going to happen from neighbors and it helps. So we we're talking about a lot of issues. Now we're going to talk about um, what are the solutions, inshallah. And can I go back to Sheikh again? If you could give <coughs> us a few examples from the, uh, our life of the Prophet, it would be... Of course. Of course. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu wa sallam was, was, was of course a, a great, great man and uh, the best man which I know in the world. Uh, of course, he, he always looked after the neighbors. He always looked after the orphans. He always looked after the orphans, which the mothers and, and the children. And, and all his neighbors, he had, he had, a, he had a, uh, every every lunchtime, every lunchtime he was feeding all the poor. They come to his house, and uh, all Muslim, all non-Muslim, they come to his house and feed and uh, eat, and uh, they go. This was uh, it was his character. But of course, uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam many times says, <coughs> "You are not a believer." Three times he says, "Of course, he is not a believer. He is not a believer. He is not a believer." And uh, one of the companions said, "Who is not a believer?" He said, "A person." whose neighbor is not safe from mm. him. And any time the Prophet wasallam encouraged, <coughs> encouraged all, all his companions, all his Sahaba, he says, <coughs> if you make it some soup, put a little bit more water in there, and give a bowl to the other one as well. You, your neighbor has a right. And again, uh, um, the Prophet wasallam was Aisha sallallahu uh, anhu, Umm al muminin was saying to the, uh, saying, saying to the Sahaba, as the Prophet wasallam said, Gabriel came to me always so much insisting on the right of the neighbor, which I thought uh, this neighbor going to inherit from me as well. That much, like a family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, of course, uh, we, uh, we have here, وَبِالْوَالِدَ لِحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَ وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِنِ وَالْجَارِ ذِ الْقُرْبَ وَالْجَارَ جُمْ That means if you, you, you have to be بِالْوَالِدَ لِحْسَانًا That means you have to, you have to be uh, so good to your parents. And the same, the same level, same size, you have to be good to your neighbor. Neighbor from the, near to you, neighbor from far. Even you are in trouble. You have some trouble. Somebody is with you going. If he hasn't got the food, if he lost his money, you have to help him. This is part of the zakat which we give. You must help him. These are the friendship which we have to have. And the Prophet wasallam was head of that. His character was character of the Quran. And character was a so, so merciful. Merciful Bishti Aisha radiallahu anhu, Umm al says, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa character was, he give, he give like a wind, which a blue in wind, just give money here, just give money there, just anybody, no one around him was poor, and if there was a poor, they gave. This was, this was the generosity of the Prophet, and generosity of the companion, and the generosity of the companion of the companion, and generosity of the uh, until we come in. We got the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him. However, what I was going to hear, uh, something which is happening in this, uh, in, in this day and age, in this current situation, which, which maybe we have, we have our families, and maybe time to time, <coughs> we don't see our son even upstairs. You understand what I'm saying? The son comes and it goes mm. up and you don't see him. Other one, mm. you don't see him. You help your neighbor, but you don't know what your son doing. <coughs> what your children do. It's very important we give the tradition to them. Perhaps we neglect. Perhaps the older neglect. We haven't, it looks like a gap between myself and my son and my daughter. They have old friends. But as soon as come to me, just say, uh, Salam Baba or Salam Father or Salam, and it goes. What are you doing, son? We have not given enough friendship to them. It's true. This is a very important, we work on this as well. If we work, <coughs> the Christian work, the Jews work, all are working together, we are youth come together and they find out the tradition which we had when we were young. All the parents were looking after us like a treasure. At the moment your food is there, your dad is there and, and it just goes. It's important we keep that friendship and we keep the Islam and we keep the, of course Christianity all goes forward and the friendship. Thank this you. is a very important point which we have to. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing especially the, from the Quran as well. Can I come to Mr. Robin? Um, how do we teach our kids what we've learned or what the values we have? Um, 
it is true it's, it's breaking down. We don't talk to our kids anymore. <coughs> they're into their YouTube or whatever. They're doing something else. How do we teach? And um, if you could tell us some tips. I would say that actually our children are surpri surprisingly idealistic. They they have it. It's there. It's of course. And um, it, they need to see us active, and uh, come along, come along with us. Join us in the activities that we do in reaching out. If I could just add something of, of faith p perspective, this this idea of the two commandments of uh, we love the Lord our God with all our soul or with our might. Or our and we love our neighbor as ourselves. The two are interrelated, and when we find some barrier Absolutely. between ourselves <coughs> and our, our neighbor, it, breaking through that barrier also deepens our faith. And if we can't deal with our neighbor very well, it really affects our faith. So, our <coughs> in the Universal Peace Federation, we, we see humanity as one family under, under God, under a loving God. So. Actually, we have some responsibility to other family members. So, Absolutely. we who are blessed and prosperous, living in a stable country, we we need to, to be aware of issues and and try to support and help and solve issues around the world. And I think this is this is one of our, our the values that we need to take. Not we can experience it in a in a in multicultural city like London, we can <coughs> experience the diaspora of, of many countries where there are many problems, but by working with them, helping to sol solve those problems, working with them together, yes. actually uh, we, can, we can broaden our own consciousness and broaden our own faith. Do you, do you uh, remember that when you were young, mm. of course, that when we were mm. teached by our parents? Or not, our too long, parents. not too long ago. <laughs> you <laughs> can't <laughs> say when you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> not too long ago. Yeah. Do you, can you bring something out from there? You think that really helped you? Uh, from that day, you, oh, that worked for me. Because <coughs> there are a lot of young, young uh, parents are watching mm. and they can what relate to that. Because you, what, it what? takes one thing to uh, change your lifestyle, isn't it? Mm. Like my parents said like that, and I've done it and it worked. I think my, my particularly my mum and dad, they did a lot of charity work. That was, was valuable to see. I think uh, the local vicar that we had was also very community-based, so he would go and visit everyone's house, and he knew <laughs> if someone didn't have a job, he knew if someone was had a business, <coughs> and he would connect them. So he was very much involved in that level. So I, I think it's it's very important to to know uh, the people in our community, and uh, to know what their situation is, and to to relate. Do you to see them the warmly. difference of the uh, of the mm. uh, city and the uh, countryside? Is the upbringing very, are different? Very much. Okay. I think in the countryside it takes longer to break through with the relationships, but then the relationships are much deeper, mm. they're much stronger, and people will will support each other a lot more. They'll take each other to hospital appointments or to yeah. drive there or pick up food for for an older neighbour. Or it's it's a, a very precious relationship in the countryside, but it takes time <coughs> to to build that relationship. Perhaps it's an easier life there, you know, in the countryside, all they know each other as a villages. Mm. <coughs> but here, everybody comes, of course, to city, to countries, uh, mm. especially. Mm. And they're busy as well. Uh, and, they have and, and, and they're busy, busy, mm. busy, busy, mm. busy. <coughs> However, what we can do, again, what I would like to say in, in here, our younger, our younger are allowed to do what, what the Western are doing to, together. Especially, I'm talking about uh, uh, Muslim, uh, Muslim youth. They are lovely. Some, some, sometimes, of course, uh, they want to shave a head a little bit here, a little <laughs> bit there. There, there no beard. Uh, 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 a little bit of rap, a little bit dancing, a little bit of uh, I don't know. Sometimes they. I'm not very fond of the trousers hanging, hanging <laughs> bottom. But of course, they, uh, many come and say, Sheikh, why you look like this? I say, uh, and are you, are you Sheikh? I say, I am the Sheikh of those people, which, which. Uh, they, they, are, they are modernized. They, are, they have a hair like that, they have that, they have that, because I am their servant. I want to bring him back. I want to help them. I don't want to suddenly, suddenly they go out of the realm of Islam, go and they, they do not want to talk. He says, no, I don't want a God, I don't want Islam. If it's Islam, want to hold me like this, hold me, I don't. I want to have a little bit of fun. I want to have a little bit of that. Mm. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to, for example, mm. get from, oh, it's a different things. But we have to guide them in the way, in the way, okay, look, 
the Islam is, is not just a, just a, a little bit of a very dry, a dry you got to give them space. Regulation. Space, they give me space. Islam is mm. a modern, can be modernized itself, modernize itself. Islam to the end of the world modernize itself. You know, up, upgrade itself in the in the body by the Sharia law. <clears throat> Therefore, what we can do, there is no problem as long as they they they, they want to hold the I don't know the, the hanging the uh, uh, <laughs> trousers. No, but I say I don't mind as long as when you go into prayer, pull it up. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh, I help you. <laughs> I help you. <laughs> there is a friend. They want to do it. About the five hundred thousand. I know. I know the Muslim. They do it like this. But of course. There is no problem. There is no problem. You haven't got a beard. There is no problem if you got the music. Just let's do your salah. This is the important <laughs> thing is I, I want you to do your salah and do everything and enjoy yourself. Islam is so fun. Islam is so funky. Islam is so pleasurable. It is not a just a droid, uh, some droid rule. Uh, you have to do that. You have to do that. You have to. No. Islam is, a, Islam is, oh, Almighty God, I love you. And he says, I love you too, simple as, <laughs> oh Almighty God, I respect you, I respect you too, you know, oh, Almighty God, I eat for you that, I eat for you apple, he says, pleasure, enjoy, and I give you another one, Thank you, Do you know, someone, <laughs> this is the way how it goes, these people should be like that, and of course, we have to, as a, as a older, we have to go to them, of not course. they coming to us. Of course, that's very important as well. We go to them and be, comp be compatible with them. Like a sheikh, but you can see, is a cool, you know. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you. May Allah bless you and has in paradise. Sheikh and I, mashallah. Um, James, um, you have a children. What do you think you have to do to teach them the manners? It's mm -hmm. important to your faith <coughs> and, and it's important to others, people around them. Mm -hmm. And what would you do? What would be your steps? Do you have any plans? Well, I have a three-year-old boy and a three-month-old daughter so perhaps your viewers could phone in and give me some tips rather than okay. that because I daily feel like I don't Would know you what to I'm say doing. hello to them? Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. the <laughs> okay. Hopefully they're in bed by now. Okay. Um, but uh, a lot of what's been sort of, sort of said and discussed already, I think the importance of just being present both in your family and also in the community. I spent some time working with gangs in California in the USA and so many of the young men there who had made poor decisions, who weren't caring for themselves, let alone for their neighbours, mm. is because it hadn't been modelled to them. They hadn't had a father figure. They hadn't had any mm. figure in their lives who'd, st who'd stuck around for more than a few months at a time. They were lacking that kind of role model. And I don't see that level of, um, I suppose, disengagement in, in our community. There's, you know, there's elements of that. You know, we see gangs of young men hanging around on street corners, sometimes selling drugs, those sorts of things. Um, but, but I think it's important of recognizing that need, that it's, you know, as a father, I see the importance of, of being a male role model to my young son. That is, I find it quite scary now that, you know, he's just three years old, but, but seeing how he watches, how I interact with my wife, how <coughs> I interact with my neighbors, mm. he sort of soaks all this up. Sometimes he'll come out with things <coughs> that I'm like, oh, did you hear me say that? You know, it's. It's being aware that from a very early age that, that those lives are being shaped by what I'm doing, by what we're mm. doing in our community. Mm. And so taking that seriously and, 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 and helping with that, being a positive Does model. he go to school? Yeah. Not yet. He's just started at nursery school. So what so would you morning. say on the way? What would you talk to him? Would, you, would it be like you will see a lot of different, different faces from different countries? So it's a nice way to interact with them. So he can be different, but he's got this, he's got that. Yeah, you know, give and him I, I think tips. that's one of the, the great benefits of, of growing up in, in East London because it's, it's not something I have to install. Some of my mm. friends who live out, I don't know, in, in Cumbria or somewhere else, where it's a mostly white community, then some of my friends are sort of having to have more of those conversations about, I don't know, different faiths, different beliefs, different uh, sort of communities. Mm. And so I love that, that my son, when he's walking just just down past, you know, on our, on our block, he's, he's passing multiple, you know, uh, different <coughs> cultures, different backgrounds. And, and also he experiences the different sort of levels of life as well. You know, I love it. I sort of encourage him that when we walk past someone who is homeless too, mm. we're going to have a conversation. We'll ask their name. He'll if, ask if they have food. And so it's not hiding that, that there are uh, difficult things in society or that there are bad things in the world. But, but having those opportunities to say, this person is homeless, this person is a drug addict, and that, that's not right, and it's our role to care for those people. Of and course, so it's, it's that day-to-day -day <coughs> modeling. It's, I, I don't think that we can leave it just to our teachers or our 
you know, our vicars mm. or who, mm. you know, whoever our faith leaders, whoever it is, to mm. to do that. It, it needs to come as a daily thing that that we are being watched daily by our young people. And I think there are challenges within our community of intergenerational differences, where perhaps people, migrants that have come to this country and, and speak one language, and then a couple of generations later, <coughs> they yeah. they come to school and just speaking English. And so there's that disengagement. Yeah. There's that there mm. isn't a heart language between those generations. And so that's a bigger challenge, but it, it's, mm. it, it, it doesn't mean that it, it can't be bridged, it just means that more effort and perhaps then there is a greater role within the community, perhaps it, whether it's at a church or a mosque, whatever it is, to, to help those families that are struggling because of some of those differences that we see within our community. You know, it's amazing. It's like you're working with your kid, but you're educating him all the way. Mm. Absolutely. And things, mm. this kind of stuff, you won't learn in the school, actually. No. This mm. is more experienced. And mm. I've <coughs> seen my dad doing that. I've mm. seen my dad talking to that person. I've seen my dad doing this. Mm. It's always going to be in your back of your mm. mind. And, and, and that builds a respect. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. Like, if I ask you, um, young people, mm. especially because they're really um, pure from the heart, mm. what they see and they mm. learn. And, you know, especially media, I mean, you get all the media talking about Muslim extremists, Muslim this, Muslim that, almost <coughs> covers up mm. every other day. Mm. And somehow it divides, it frightens them. You know, just like, oh, am I that bad? Is my, you know, is my community that bad? <coughs> and it takes mm. them away, they, they mm. lose their confidence talking to people. What would you say to you? So that is, that it's not helping, it's just, you know, mm. demoralizing what we have already mm. there. Mm. So how do we, I know, tell our young people, mm. basically the Muslims, the ones who have been, you know, seeing those uh, headlines, what, what should we do? What would you say if you were in my shoes? <coughs> it is important to, to know the, the heroes of your history, the heroes and the heroines of your history. And I, I think when a, a community feels persecuted or discriminated against, there's a tendency to, to, to reach in <coughs> and to make a stronger inner relationship. At that time it's, it's even more important to reach out. I, not to <coughs> trust that what the media is mm. saying reflects what everyone's thinking, because that's not true. That's, that means you're taking on yourself what the media is saying is as what everyone is say, thinking. There are some truth in it though. I'm not saying that we don't have extremists, <coughs> we don't have those uh, uh, druggies and all that stuff. Of course they are, but when you try to put it into everybody, then it becomes sure. an issue. That's, so that's it's like taking a, a tiny bit yeah. of and <coughs> expanding it to a whole community, which, which is wrong. So therefore <coughs> we need to emphasize the, the good work that's happening, the, uh, the responsible uh, role models in society, as well as the the good things that have happened in, in history. And the m main thing I think also is, is to keep on giving out. If you s kind of draw <coughs> the, the wagons in and look inwards and uh, have this siege mentality, then it, it will never change. But by continually giving, then people's perspectives will change. Uh, it just, it really is a matter of time and, and persistence. <coughs> I, I had some small e experience of this kind of dynamic, but that persistence pays off, and then those friends are real friends. By reaching out and making those friends, who are the <coughs> bridgeheads, those friends are real, and they and they will reach, they will introduce you to other other communities, other people, who are who will become more open. But uh, it's give out when it's still when it's difficult. Mm -hmm. I. I believe, of course, majority of the. I don't know if you want to ask, just just uh, uh, clarify <coughs> for our, 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 our friend. Uh, majority of the Muslims, all over the world, we got 1.8 billion Muslims. I'm mm. counting, and mm. especially in here, which mm. we got the, in this country, which we got the three three million Muslims. The majority, the majority are very good. Uh, uh, tax pain, law abiding people, mm. they go into work mm. and the contributors, billions of billions of from, from charity. Mm. Uh, mm. The Muslim charities in countries the <coughs> highest highest charity which we mm. give. Which we give hundred <coughs> uh, 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 hundreds hundreds of millions come mm. come. However Two facts we got here, two or fac faction of the uh, um, uh, which we have which it doesn't help. First of course is a is a uh, is a uh, media. Media make from a mole a mountain. 
Of course, he has to sell some, something, some, I, I say, I, many times I told him, why are you doing that? He said, well, uh, I have to sell something. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. It looks like, a, for example, uh, when they say to, in the media, uh, uh, the, the news is not when, the, when, the, when the, a dog bites a man. The news is when a man bites a dog. You know, this is a news. This is, we have to twist it and tangle it. As soon mm. as they twist it, it goes against our communities, against our youth. And the youth get depressed and depressed. <coughs> is that their fault? We have, of course, several, several other organizations which maybe through that depression they get in more or some, sometimes uh, sometime the police doesn't help, sometimes the prevent doesn't help, sometimes these which we are talking to them say how we can look up doesn't help because they are, they are coming as a, as a us and them. They say, look, the police holding me, but it doesn't hold the, for example, other person. Why? And this is a which, which bring a separation. We are trying to integrate them. Come, come, come integrate with all. These little things which is happening, therefore, what we need to do again, working with the government, working with the people, working with the parents, there is a very important, sometime the child, our child, going wrong, extremist, and we don't know, under our nose, under the father is a taxi driver or the, uh, have, a, have, a, have a restaurant and goes and he does not look what his son is doing. He should be responsible to look and, and, and uh, perhaps we can save all the family. We just got um, a minute for a break, inshallah. After the break, we'll um, talk about how um, Sheikh Ramzi actually grown up, especially uh, in his teenage. I'm sure this will have a lot of tips. <laughs> I don't know what you're share, sir. We probably will help. Um, what happens is I used to run um, uh, parenting courses myself, and mm. I found a lot of their parents actually, they're not communicating <coughs> well with their kids. Mm. Especially third generation here, they speak mm. English, and the mm. first generation, they speak Bengali, I'm mm. talking about. Mm. And there's a big gap in the middle, man. They can't help Absolutely. with their homework, mm. they can't communicate with them. And that. Mm. If even their food, food is different as well. Mm. So I will have a chat on after the break, inshallah. Dear viewers, stay with us. We're just going for a small break again, inshallah. I'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullah.